right. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to week seven. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, differentiation in uh, your own family. And, and I'm, I'm really encouraging you to make this very personal. This will also help you with your next process paper. Um, I, uh, the author does an incredible job. Make sure you read um, this week. If you're not reading a lot, read this week's. Um, the author does a really good job of self-disclosure. And I highly value self-disclosure. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, very much like it when you are uh, open and honest as you uh, search your heart to better understand yourself and your family and how you interact with your family. I understand there are uh, situations out there that that are not appropriate for you to, to disclose, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm not asking you to your absolute most horrific, deepest, darkest abuse, whatever, you know, I'm not, 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 not really asking for that at all. Um, but I do want you to think about um, the dynamics of your family in, in open and honest ways. And, and uh, so this, this, uh, it's really interesting. And I think I might've said this last week, but as I'm reading this book, um, a lot of it is stories and, and the author talking about um, what, what he has been through uh, in this process of differentiation, um, which really is good. It's really powerful because uh, what, what a better way to learn something other than seeing it laid out uh, through someone else's example. So we're going to, it's a very short um, <clears throat> lecture today, which everybody says, woohoo, yay, I'll pause and let you all jump up and down the screen. I love this picture because, uh, well, they're cute little animals, whatever kind of animals they are. Um, but you, it, th this is amazing, right? In terms of, um, think about your family. Was there a person in your family that was like everybody else was really close? And then there's this one person like off over here by themselves, like, hmm, right? Very interesting. Um, and, and obviously, those are the kinds of things that um, that I want y'all to look at. And and y'all have done. Uh, when I first started this class, I was I was uh, uh, pretty adamant about I don't want any, you know, make nice fairy tale, you know, we're all Christians, we love each other, everything's fine, you know. Like no, it, we're all human and we're all a mess. Uh, we just got back from Virginia Beach, and uh, man, were the triangles flying and the uh, craziness. My, I'm sorry, my wife's family lives in Virginia Beach, so it was my wife's mom and dad and my wife's sister and her husband, and two of her kids were at home. One is off to college, and we had a wonderful time, And but we did have one little, like, blow up. It was very, <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> it was very interesting. And man, I was thinking um, about these concepts, this, these Bowenian theory concepts, and they really play out beautifully. Um, I mean, you can really plug your you, almost any scenario into these concepts. Um, and certainly as, as part of your learning process, I, I, want, I want you to be able to do that. Um, so, so think about events in your life, understand and know that events, and the author starts out talking about the birth of his child, um, <clears throat> actually not even the birth of his child, just his wife got pregnant, and it began to uh, bring up his relationship with his father, and, and that's very common, the, the, uh, the, that an event will bring up some kind of, of uh, emotion in a person. Uh, fear, anxiety, depression, anger, sadness, whatever it might be, and um, and it's and it's helpful to be able to stop and evaluate and say, hmm, where do, where does that come from? Um, so I want you to think about, um, and, and there's going to be, you know, you know, how many times in this short little uh, video lecture am I going to say I want you to think about your family and your relationships? I'm really doing that on purpose and really emphasizing uh, what I'm wanting you to do. And, and again, this is going to help you. I'm expecting your next set of papers to be um, far better than the first set of papers in terms of 
understanding better what it is that I want. Because some of you struggled with, well, I don't really understand what you want. And and some of the papers were kind of like just putting some facts out there about your family. And I'm like, yeah. And I didn't I didn't ding you too terribly hard for that if that was you. And I'm not picking on any specific person. I don't have a, a specific a specific <laughs> in mind. Um but um, but this this chapter is a perfect example of what I'm looking for uh, in the paper. So what think about the levels of depth that you share with your family uh, and and who who right? So um, for me, I'll just go ahead and do a little self disclosure. My dad was very uh, stoic and non emotional, uh, very. Um, I mean, he was with us and he was there and he was active and he was involved and he would throw the football with us and throw the frisbee with us and kick the soccer ball back and forth and all those kind of, you know, he was, he was there, but emotionally he did not know how to connect. So when it came to depth of sharing, pouring your heart out, <clears throat> going over some kind of a problem, relationship issues, talking through relationship stuff, um, that was mom for, in my family, very much mom, not dad at all. Um, in fact, I was, as I was reading the textbook, I was like, wow, this, this, is, this family is a lot like my family. <laughs> like, ooh, some similarities there. And you may find that or you may find it opposite. You may say, well, yeah, it's more like my mom was more that way and my dad was more the other way. Whichever way that is, I know. I was like, ah. Okay. Um, what, what is your um, family's, how affectionate is your family? So let's see, three three. Uh, good friends of mine in high school, uh, Duke and Todd and me, one of those families was very emotional. I mean, they would yell and scream and cuss and throw things and wow, loved each other very much. They were just very volatile and very emotional, but they were also very, uh, very affectionate uh, and very loving towards one another. So, so in terms of just expression of emotion, positive or negative, it was just, it was just full bore, right? Uh, then there was my family, which was really kind of intermediate, kind of right in the middle. Um, not a whole lot of yelling and screaming and cussing. Um, but, you know, when people got mad, we knew it, right? It wasn't just a silent, sullen walk off. It was We, we would talk it out. Um, certainly my brother and I screamed and yelled at each other, but that was kid stuff. Um, and we were fairly affectionate, but not extremely affectionate. And then the, the other family, very uh, stoic, very non-affectionate, never, no, never. I'm like, this kid never heard a raised voice in his life. So no emotion expressed of any kind, uh, anger or affectionate, hardly. Um, so, so just kind of plug yourself into and think about your family in, in terms of those things. I hope this is helpful for some of you. Some of you are like, yeah, 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 get it, get it, next next point. Some of you are like, yeah, I'm working on this. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm seeing it. Um, that's good. Okay, so who is the conflict between primary, primary conflicts? Um, you know, oftentimes people will say, well, you know, my I got along really good with this sister or this brother, uh, but this one brother or sister, we really just – man, we just fought all the time. And it was always about competition, who's doing best in school, or who's doing best in band, or who's doing best in sports, or or whatever, right? Uh, or or something else. It could be about a, a personal space boundary or, or a physical space issue in terms of, you know, we shared a room and, and their junk was always on my side of the room, their trash and mess and dirty clothes. And, and so we fought over kind of boundary issues or whatever it is. Um, so what's the topic and with whom uh, and what was mom and dad's conflict like? Now, if if you're going to say, well, mom and dad didn't have any conflict, you be better way to say that would be we never saw mom and dad's conflict. Mom and dad swept it under the rug, didn't say anything. Maybe they talked alone. I have no idea. But please don't say my mom and dad didn't have any conflict um, because that's not possible. That is not a within the realm of possibilities. They could have never engaged in it or dealt with it, but the, there's the, the problems were there. So, so speculate about that and, and maybe even ask your parents about that. And if they are that type of person <clears throat> uh, what, that don't talk about it, you may be hard, may be hard pressed to get anything out of them at all. So that, that, but that could be an interesting thing. 
um, feelings of connectedness, feelings of separation. Um, and then, and then think about your desire as you grew up, think about your desire to distance yourself from your family. Uh, and I'm talking about the healthy, normal adolescence, you know, I want to do my own thing. I want to think my own thoughts, you know, that kind of stuff. There may have been some conflict around that. Uh, your family, maybe your family talked about it. Maybe your family didn't talk about it. Um, that you know how normal that is and how that process works um but so look into that if you would <clears throat> um i'm putting this in and again we're christian university and coming from a christian perspective and i know y'all are all on board with that but i want you to think of of what the author said about his dad in terms of judgments right and so judgments is as biblically wrong you know anybody guilty of uh, me or I'll, I'll go first um, and then with that judgment actually comes oftentimes, almost always, unless caught and dealt with and taught how to deal with it, comes um, resentment, uh, unforgiveness, uh, bitterness, anger, hatred. You know, it, it can get really ugly. <clears throat> um, so think about your judgments towards your parents. Um I, I, I judged my dad as one not very emotional, uh, not having a very high emotional IQ, I would say, from an educated point of view, but wouldn't have said that then. Uh, and there were some there was some resentment there. There was some pain there uh, that I have done extensive work dealing with and counseling and prayer. And yes, <laughs> working through that still raises its ugly head up from time to time. Um, so identify the triangles in your family, uh, and, and, and you may be confused by the reasons for the triangles. Well, so uh, conflict between mom and dad and mom brings you in to ease the anxiety. That's the reason for the triangle. That's what I mean when I say that. Um, one of the things that Bowen said and, and the author of this textbook said was, um, one of the most, uh, and I don't, I'm not going to quote this perfectly, you'll read it, but the most uh, adult thing that you can do, the most grown up thing that you can do is to establish, intentionally establish a one on one relationship with your family members. And I want to encourage you to do that. And he talked about the awkwardness of, of trying to uh, connect with his dad and do things with his dad, uh, but was able to find some. Uh, common ground where he actually could do that and really interesting how he ended up resolving a lot of that with his dad and not with his mom uh, was never really able, able to get beyond that barrier of mom telling her stories about her uh, about her friends and their feelings never really about her him trying to pull that out of her and her not going there with him uh, and him trying to share stories about himself and her not really responding to that other than responding with another story that that reminded her of about one of her family members or her friends, which is a real interesting kind of dodging, you know, I'm not going to deal with the emotional things kind of a thing. Uh, and that was actually surprising to me as I read that because of he had been quote, so close to his mom. Um, so that, that, those are, that's just, you know, it's, it's, as you look at stuff, you may find the same kinds of things. And as you, I hope, I hope you'll actually try uh, uh, to work on this. Um, I have worked on this. Another thing that I don't know that's in here. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's not do that. I want to, I want to stick more with family of origin, but we're going to talk in the future about, uh, relationship with your spouse if you're married um, and if you're not you're going to use your imagination uh, but that whole concept of of uh, relating to them as an adult and not as a child one of one off it's real common for one person in the marriage to kind of take the role of the child and the other one take the role of the parent which is really unhealthy obviously um, learn to see your parents through God's eyes you know if if we see them as people <clears throat> And we realize um, how they were raised. Um, it can be really helpful. It, it, it can help us understand. Uh, it, it doesn't take away painful things that they've done in and of itself. That's going to come through forgiveness. You asking the Lord to forgive you for the judgments and the unforgiveness that you held towards your parents. This is very key, by the way, very important. And then, and then you 
asking the Lord to empower you to forgive them, let his forgiveness flow through you to forgive them for what they did. Uh, but my father was uh, raised by, um, he was an only child and his mom and dad were um, kind of on the mean side and just not, didn't, didn't uh, have patience with him, didn't teach him things, didn't, uh, didn't listen to him, didn't, he didn't have a voice uh, really at all. It was just my way of the highway period and was absolutely never questioned. Um, no, no emotion, no, very little emotion, maybe some anger, um, but no, um, very, probably very little. I mean, it was a small child. I'm sure there was affection, but not a whole, not very affectionate, not very expressive of, of uh, love and affection. Uh, and that helped me understand my dad. Well, of course, he didn't have an example of being uh, emotionally vulnerable, so he wasn't able to himself. Uh, so we'll look at look at triangles, understand uh, the triangles in your family and the multi multi triangles, right? The connected triangles, not just not just unless you're you know if you're a, a, a only child, it may just be a triangle, right? So, but then again, there's triangles that bring in other people for uh, extended family members, other uh, can be even be non family members, potentially um, fusions, distance. That's a continuum there, um, et cetera. You know all the things that we've been talking about. But understand how those things have impacted your own emotional world, uh, how, what, your, your emotional makeup, and what you're like emotionally, but also how you relate to others, um, boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, your own children, your, your parents, you know, those kinds of things. So uh, be insightful about those things. Um, and also, I want you to pick out who is the more dominant one uh, and who is the more passive one in your uh, parents, but also really in families in general. My mom was very much more dominant. My dad was very passive. Dad, you know, whatever mom wants, whatever mom says. So I don't know if you can read this. I'm going to read it to you. I thought it was cute. It's, uh, so this is the patient looking at these uh, Rorschach tests. It's just psychological tests in case you don't know about this. Uh, and the, here's the psychiatrist over here psychologist, counselor, whatever. Uh, it's just a simple Rorschach ink block, uh, Mr. Brownwell. Just, so just calm down and tell me what each one suggests to you. Um, and it's just a cute, fun little thing for nothing. Doesn't have a lot to do with anything. But um, I, I do want you to um, um, evaluate your family and write your paper really based on, uh, uh, I know there's the assignment written there, but I really want you to, to flip through this PowerPoint and hit these points and think about these things and also use uh, chapter seven. I know that's not in the directions on the on the um, syllabus, but in essence, that's what I'm asking for. I was I saw this and I was like, perfect. This is perfect. This is exactly what I'm asking for. First time I've taught this course. I've taught courses similar to it. It's the first time I've taught this course. So I'm, I'm putting it together as I go, so to speak. All right, guys. Goodbye. God bless. And I will see you on the next video.